What is up guys and welcome back to Lester Athletes. I'm Chadwell and today like always another interesting video for you here on the channel. Best young cores in the NBA. Um, this is kind of a reaction or not a reaction more of a um, kind of my own young cores in the NBA. I've been actually meaning to record this video for a long time but I originally had it um, I keep burping. I don't know why. 25 and younger um, in the NBA, which 25 maybe is stretching it, but I did like 25. Um, and then a couple days ago, Bleacher Report released a best young cores in the NBA video or article. I reacted. I looked at it a little bit. I changed mine up a little bit. Um, and they had 23 and under. So this is a 23 and under. So if you don't see someone, it's because they're 24 or I missed them. And my fault. Um, uh, but 23 and younger for them, and this is just off of 23 and younger. There could be another player that's really, really good, like, off the top of my head, um, Shea Gilgis Alexander, that just turned 25. Um, he could be very, very good, um, but he's not uh, 23 and younger, okay? So, technically not counted. But let's get started with a uh, make sure to like and subscribe on the video. 93% of you are not subscribed. Uh, it used to be 95. Now it's 93. Um, so we're getting better. We're getting some more. Uh, but yeah, uh, seeing a subscriber makes me want to grind for more. So yeah, other than that, let's start for the video. Honorable mention, Utah Jazz. I'm putting the Utah Jazz here because ten I did not add a team. And I think I definitely doubted that team. And I'm changing and adding them up here uh, now. I'll talk about it when we get there. Arnold mentioned Utah Jazz. Utah Jazz is um, a team that you can see the people on the left who are 23 and under. Uh, maybe it's not all the 23 and unders, but these are pretty much big players that are 23 and under that uh, we should be looking at. Um, Ochai Abaji, very good. Had 10 fouls in the Summer League, though. Kind of crazy. Um, Keontae George, someone that I think was a hidden gem for them that's going to hit very good for the Utah Jazz. Taylor Hendricks, we'll have to see what happens. Out for injury for the whole Summer League. Taylor uh, Horn Tucker, THT, looks like the guy that was old reliable for the Lakers. He's actually, I think, 23. So, um... He's still able to be on this list, um, and he did show some flashes, so I do think the Utah Jazz could have a good uh, uh, connection with him. Walker Kessel looks like a, a premier center in the league, could be a nice all-star later on, and that's really the reason why they're on this list. Other than that, it's kind of, uh, we'll have to see players, which isn't that good for making it top 10. By the way, it is top 10. Um, Bryce Sensiball, um had a knee injury. Hopefully, the pure scoring is still going to be there. I think on the Utah Jazz, he has time to improve, so I think it's very good. But number 10 is Charlotte Hornets. This was actually number 9 before I made uh, some light adjustments right before this video. Um, he, They are number 10 for me. And you might actually think they should be higher, but let's be honest here. Other than LaMelo Ball, Brandon Miller, and Mark Williams... Are those really big name players that are going to be giving you good solid minutes in rotation if you're trying to win now let's say that too james book knight i kind of given up on i know he's still young um but with all the uh um i think he, he was arrested for uh gun possession of a weapon um i don't remember what it was but he did get arrested i remember um i kind of given up on him a little bit he's very inconsistent uh frame it's just eh Okay, Kai Jones, very good. Dunked on Wemben Yama, crazy, uh, but very athletic. Can they, he be a center for the future? I don't think so. Um, I think definitely Mark Williams will be their center for the future with his blocking ability, his height, his ability to work off a good pick and roll, which works very well with Lamelo. Mark Williams will be their center for the future. That's why I'm putting him up here. Brandon Miller, of course, a good player. James Naji, it's going to be hard for him, um, especially with Kai probably being that – Kai Jones, yes. I almost said Kay Jones. Kai Jones being that backup, it's going to be hard. He's probably going to be third string. But does he have potential? I do think so. Um, coming out the uh, 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 Spain, he was very good shot blocking, very young. We're going to have to see what happens. Nick Smith Jr., I really like, but I do not like him for the Hornets. And I do not like him uh, trying to get better with the Hornets. Um, I really want him on another team. I really wish he got drafted to another team, but... Um, We'll have to see what happens because he has very, very good potential. But that's why they're number 10 because there's not really that much out there. At number 9, this is the team I didn't really add on, but I'm going to add them to this list. Minnesota Timberwolves. Troy Brown Jr., Josh Minow. Not really players in this scenario. 
Anthony Edwards is probably one of the best young players coming out right now. Um, All-star already. I think he's sky's the limit for him. He should help the Timberwolves get on this list, and he's at number nine. I'm going to have to explain why he's not. they're not higher, and that's because, um, I don't know. When you only have Anthony Edwards, Jaden McDaniels, who's very, very underrated, don't get me wrong, but offensively isn't that great. Defensively, he's probably one of the best defenders in the league. Leonard Miller, um, we're going to have to see what happens with him, but me personally, I love Leonard Miller. kind of made him push onto this list. Nas Reed, we'll have to see with the three-center uh, ideal in backup, but he's going to be a certified backup offensively, very good, defensively not as well. Um, Anthony Edwards automatically put them on this list. Are th- why aren't they higher? Um, honestly, because um, there's a lot more potential with the young players while also having an established guy that could be very, very good. Um, but honestly, 23 and under, uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, it, that's, I truly think that they're at number nine. They could, on everyone's list, they probably could be higher. But I think other teams have an established star or have somebody that's very, very good with very, very good potential while also having way more players with great, better potential. Um, so that's where at number nine for me. At number eight is New Orleans Pelicans. Speaking of players that have very good potential, Zion Williamson is still an established star, Does is very good. Um, kind of looks like three L's right there, but there's an actual capitalization on the I accidentally. Um, Zion Williamson is very, very good, even though um, he's very, very good in the bed, too. Um, Trey Murphy the third, um, he looks like he could be very good. With Zion out, he excelled very, very well. Um, and he's young. He's young. Athletic, shoot the ball, can really help defensively with his frame. That's a good 3 and D player for you. EJ Liddell, I really like as a, a scorer. Um, really sucked last year when he got injured. Um and had to be out for the whole season, but still someone that's good uh, that I like. Kyra Lewis Jr. never really found his spot. I don't know how I feel re- really about him, especially with him being a smaller guard. Jordan Hawkins looks like he can really score the ball. I'm very excited for the New Orleans Pelicans to have Jordan Hawkins. Um, we're going to see what happens with him, and he does have some very good potential. Same with Dyson Daniels. Dyson Daniels is one of my favorite players in the NBA when it comes to potential. This guy, tall, score the ball, pass the ball, defend the ball. He can do everything. Um, is he going to shoot the three that well? Maybe not. Is he going to score that ball that well? Maybe not. But if you want somebody that's going to play make for you, that's going to score for you, that's going to um, drive in and score, I should say, that can pass the ball and defend well, Dyson Daniels is your guy, and I think the New Orleans Pelicans are going to use him later on in the future. At number seven is Indiana Pacers. Again, another established star in Tyrese Halburn and the players around him. Honestly, Pacers could have moved higher. Um, Isaiah Jackson is going to be locked down as a backup um, with Miles Turner getting a new deal. Bandic Matherin could be one of the better peer scorers in the league. Um, I think he is bound to only be a six man in this league. Just the fact that other than uh, that scoring, passing, and defensively, probably not the best. Uh, Andrew Nemhard is going to be good at the two position. Um, uh He's low-key a mini Halliburton sometimes when it comes to passing and getting triple doubles. I think Andrew Nemhart is very underrated. Uh, Aaron Neesmith kind of just there. Ben Shepard, someone out. Belmont that can really score the ball. We'll have to see what happens. Um, Jairus Walker, Swiss Army Knife guy that really is going to help them uh, excel their, excel themselves in the playoffs. Um, we're going to have to see what happens. Um, but I definitely like Jairus Walker. And I think he'll be a good player later on for them in the future. Um, we're just going to have to see with the new additions of Obi Toppin and Bruce Brown. At number six, we have the Memphis Grizzlies. I low-key could have put the Grizzlies higher. But like the other ones, there is uh, some good potential around them. Not like the Timberwolves. Uh, where they do have potential, but they don't have like high ceiling guys. Um, but you already have two all-stars here. John Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr., is crazy good for um having them for your uh uh duo for the future uh desmond bain could have been on here but he's i think 24 25 uh kenneth lofton jr um somebody that i really like personally i think he's a very good player they should add him more in the rotation jake Lare- uh Lare- why am i why am i tripping on his name Anyways, uh, Gigi Jackson, very good player. Someone I thought that shouldn't have fallen, uh, fell that far with his high potential. Um, could work very well in Memphis. 
is Memphis probably the space for him to work on character traits? Maybe not. Um, um, we'll have to see. David Roddy, I really like. Zaire Williams kind of never found his place, but David Roddy really helped him sp- his game uh, during the summer league, and I think it's uh, going to be very, very good for him. Uh, LaRavia. Why could I not say that? Why could I not say that? I literally went on a rant about how Jake La- uh, LaRavia was so well during the summer league, played so well, very underrated guy. I don't know why my brain would not say that. Isn't that crazy? Like, whoa. Um, anyways, uh, very good. Shoots the ball very well, pass the ball very well. Taller guy. I really like him for the Grizzlies. I think this is a, a gem for them. Um, we'll see how it works with uh, their team because they're kind of win now, right now. Um, but when it comes down money situations, they might have to rely on some of these younger guys. And I do like Gigi Jackson, especially to maybe rely on later on. Um, but it's going to take some time. At number five, we have Orlando Magic. I think four and five are very much debatable. I think um, that my top three are kind of my lock top three. Um, but Orlando Magic, Cole Anthony, Paulo, Anthony Black, Caleb Houston, Jet Howard, Jalen Suggs, Franz Wagner. Oh my God. The amount of talent on the Magic is insane. <coughs> Excuse me. Is insane. And if the Magic don't do something with this talent, it's going to be a huge red flag for that organization because um, when you have this many lottery picks, this many good players, and you don't do anything with it, it kind of doesn't look good on your franchise. I think here soon, maybe not this season, maybe next season, Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, uh, those players are going to be on the move. Anthony Black... Paulo and Franz is somebody I think that's going to stay on the team for a long time and fits well with how Anthony Black played in the Summer League, um, how the Magic uh, GM talked about how he feels about Anthony Black, saying that he raises the ceilings for every single player when he's on the court, which I do agree on. Um, Jet Howard, I like him. Shooting was pretty good uh, during Summer League. Um, how well is it going to be um, on the actual NBA court? We'll have to see. But Franz and Paulo are your main guys, and those are two players that you will really like for the future. At number four is Detroit Pistons. Um, Cade Cunningham's potential makes him number four for me. I think Cade is going to be better than Paulo or Franz Wagner if his potential is really hit like it should. Jalen Duren, oh my god. at ni- He's 19, by the way. He's younger than... Um, Both the Thompson twins, Brandon Miller, he doesn't turn 20 till November. Crazy. He's going to be 19 in the NBA. He was 18 in the NBA. Um, Wild with that big of a frame he is and how good he is. Hair right there. He's only two months younger than Victor, or older than Victor. Jalen Dern is a beast, and that's your center for the future. Killing Hayes is on here um, because Killing Hayes is under 23, is 23 and under. Um, do I like Killing Hayes that much? Not really, um, but he's on here. Jaden Ivey, somebody that's going to work very well with Cade, can pass the ball, can score the ball. He His work ethic is very good. Detroit Pistons like likes him a lot. Isaiah Stewart, another guy that I think is very underrated in this league and is very good. Asar Thompson, a Thompson twin with Detroit... <laughs> defensively he could be one of the better players for you could be relied on uh works well as that glue guy uh very very athletic could work well as a lob threat really like it for the pistons james wiseman has really shown in the summer league that um he could be a good center in the nba um the two bigs with james wiseman Jalen Dern, actually does work uh pistons gm talked about when i was watching a game talk about that he's trying to run a jared allen evan mobley type scenario like the Cavs. Um, will it happen? We'll have to see. But I do think that there is potential. Now we're going to my top three. At three, we have San Antonio Spurs. Bleacher Report actually had them number one. Um, and I do disagree. When we're looking at 23 and under, Malachi Branham's very good. Um, after some poor stop shots at the uh, Summer League, I still think there is good potential. C. Sissoko, I really like for the Spurs. Defensively, very good guard. Uh, can pass the ball. Kellen Johnson can score the ball, but he kind of had empty calorie minutes when it came down to it for the Spurs. Trey Jones, another empty. All these players are kind of empty calorie players from last year. Um, and now Victor Webb is on here. Dan Vassell can very really score the ball. That's kind of going to be there's somebody that's going to stay with them for sure. Same with probably Jeremy Sohan. Works well with Wemby. Can pass the ball. Play defensively. Very, very good. Blake Wesley, someone that really showed in the summer league. He's going to be good. And, of course, Victor. Victor makes him almost three on this list with his potential. Um, 
And then all the others are very, very good, but they're not really crazy, crazy good. Um, but Victor makes them kind of three on this list. Um, you can't deny that having Victor Webb and Yama doesn't make you one of the better young cores in the NBA because it's going to skyrocket you to the ceiling with what the potential is. Um, am I going to be like Bleacher Report and overreact and put them number one? No. Um, I do think they're number three. A lot of people are not going to agree with my number two, um, which actually will go to that. A lot of people I saw in the comments talking about OKC's number one. I almost put OKC number three here. Maybe this is me being delusional. And I do want to say I, I am a Thunder fan. So me watching the Thunder made me want to put them two. I don't really watch my number one. And you probably know who number one is while, uh, uh, um, what is it called? not knowing or now seeing number two but i put okc number two if we're looking at 23 and under uzman jang 611 guy that could work very well he's a prospect piece he's gonna be he's gonna be a project for it all okay josh giddy already took some strides um can rebound pass the ball learn finally that he's 68 and can drive and score the basket chad holmgren in the summer league, he has shown that he's going to be a defensive anchor. He does not care about getting dunked on. He's going to go for the ball no matter what. And that's somebody that you want in the NBA that is just going to be like, I don't care if I get posted on a highlight reel. At least I went for it. That's all that matters. Keontae Johnson, I add on here because he is an older rookie, but I do think that he could give some good minutes when it comes down to it. He's going to be a two-way player at first. I think later on could become a good start or not starter. I said starter, bench player. Um, and I think he could give some good minutes for them. Trey Mann has really increased his value for the Summer League. I thought this could be a potential. Um, we might have to cut him because the uh, guard room is getting too big. Um, probably not anymore. Uh, a lot of people might agree with me on that one. But I don't think anymore that he's going to get cut. Poku is going to be Poku. Defensively has been good. Hasn't really scored the ball well. The Poku project hasn't worked as well as we would hope for. Still one of the younger players in the NBA even though getting drafted in. When did he get drafted? 2018, 2017? No, was that 2019? It wasn't the Lonzo year. It was 2019, I think. Because that was the year with John them. And technically, technically, I think the Timberwolves picked him. So, yeah. Sound like that. Kaysan, uh, Kaysan Wallace is somebody I love, man. I love, okay? This guy's a dog. He uh, defensively can be like Marcus Smart, Drew Holiday. Kentucky shooting, I always believe in. And... He showed that first game he could shoot the ball. Um, against the Rockets, he showed that he wasn't really good shooting the ball. But um, I still believe in him, and I think this is going to be good. When it comes down to it, our backup, uh, the guard position for the Oklahoma City Thunder, was not well. Okay, Our main guard for the Thunder um, was uh, Lou Dort, really, when it came to backup trying to pass the ball when Giddy and Shea are gone. That's not good. Case and Wallace will be a good fix while also having defensive ability. J Dub and Jalen Williams. Um man, two way guard is or two way forward fit perfectly with um what we wanted uh when we were in that draft and what the uh Rockets really wanted. Um and we got the steal at twelve. And this is second guy I've rookie of the year. He played one game in the summer league, twenty one minutes, scored twenty something points, and people immediately were like, That's not happening. And it didn't. J Will, um Jalen Williams, other Jalen Williams. The way that he can charge, uh, use his body for charges is incredible in the M today's NBA game. The idea of taking out charges is crazy to me because if you see Giannis running at you full uh, pace, what makes you not just walk out the way if charges are going to be taken out? There has to be a way to stop that, and charges is the way. Um, taking out would be insane. And Jay Will is the perfect player that knows how to draw fouls and get the other team gone. Um, it works very well. I would actually love a starting lineup next year, even though I like Lou Dort, but sometimes he can be very inefficient. Um, a lineup of uh, Shea Giddy, um, Shea Giddy, uh, J Dub, um, Chet, Jay Will. I'd be okay with that um, because I think having a good traditional center like Jay Will, which he's not as traditional as you probably think um it's gonna work well with chat at the four um we'll have to see what happens but i do think they're number two and the reason why is because number one 
all of these players, when they're at, if they hit their peak, and I guess you can say the same for the Thunder, but let's be real here. All these players at their peak could be amazing, almost close to all-star level players, okay? Kevin Porter Jr., maybe not. Tari Eason, probably not, okay? Tari Eason, um, there was a stat I saw a long time ago about how, like, the only other players to hit this stat were, like, all-star NBA players. Tari Eason defensively could be very, very good. The way he uses his attitude to score the ball, too. I think having Jeff Green to kind of mellow him down would be perfect in the locker room. Um, Tari Eason, amazing player. He's going to strive under Ime Udoka. Jalen Green, inconsistent, but if he could hit his ceiling with consistency, oh my god. Jalen Green is a for sure all-star franchise player for the Rockets, and that's his team. It kind of is right now, but that's really his team if so. KPJ is going to be locked at a six-man role. I do think that he will be good def- uh, offensively, but he doesn't have the uh, passing abilities to make him that number one guard, in my opinion. Alperin Sangoon is literally mini Jokic. Alperin Sangoon is mini Jokic. Defensively, not that good. Offensively, can score the ball inside. Uh, trying to learn how to shoot the three. He can pass. He can rebound. Mini Jokic. If you can hit his ceiling, that's like a Jokic light version, which that's crazy for the Rockets to have, okay? Jabari Smith Jr. At his ceiling, is an all star player. Defensively, incredible size incredible shoot the three ball now too oh my gosh can score lengthy you we saw how good he could be in the summer league if he can do that in the nba oh my gosh he will easily be one of the better players amen thompson hits the ceiling let's say amen thompson develops a jumper this guy she's shooting for the roof now you have somebody that can pass the ball rebound the ball six seven by the way um can be as athletic as you want defensively really good score the ball he's taller jaw where he can literally dunk on anyone who he wants he can uh get fouled while also scoring we saw it in the first game with the houston rockets how good he did um almost filled up the entire stat sheet i really like him and thompson if you can't tell so um i think that's a player that's crazy good for you cam whitmore looks like a steal did very good for the Rockets in the summer league. There were some times where it did show that he's not sometimes a team player, but he still did very, very good. And that's why they're number one for me. All of these players, if they hit their ceiling, they're really good. For the Thunder, um, Chet Ch- hitting a ceiling, of course, would be very, very good. Giddy hitting his ceiling, very, very good. Kaysan hitting his ceiling, very, very good. J-Dub, too. But that's probably like four. And the other ones are probably more like if they hit their ceiling, they're role players Usman Jane could be a project piece but let's be honest here probably a role player still start just a start Tari Eason at his um ceiling one of the better uh one of the better uh stars in this league probably would get some good money Jalen Green would be an all-star Ken Porgiers I'm taking out of this list Alperin Sangoon would be mini Jokic all-star Jabari Smith Jr. all-star Amin Thompson all-star Cam Wimmer all-star they all have all-star potential so if you see that, that's a number one young core for me. When you could literally make a start, you could literally make a starting five with all those players, and that's an all-star. Amen Thompson, Jalen Green, Cam Whitmore, Jabari St. Jr., Alpen Sangoon, those all could be all-stars hitting their peak. What would happen? I don't know. But having a young core like that, that can fill out one through five, that's a number one team for me. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoy um, very much a kind of talking. I talked a lot about the Thunder now thinking about it. Yikes, my team, my fault. Um, Other than that, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I will see you in the next one, and goodbye.